present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we're here. Hey, hey. Another week has flown by. Woo. And I'm glad because I want out of January. Oh, you know, I don't want to say it too loud. We knock on wood somewhere. We knock on my Irish Blackthorn Shillelagh. We've, we've had a very light snowfall this winter. Yeah, this, despite the cold temperatures, very light snowfall. It's going to be two inches of rain tomorrow. Yes, and it's supposed to be what, seven degrees tonight? No, it was last night. No, no, no I wonder. Don't it's no, I don't think it's going to move much from the 20s today, tonight. Oh, Because right. it's going to be 46 tomorrow. Okay. With rain. I tell you, when I walk outside, I take a, a whiff of that wonderful aroma of wood burning that the dude down the street has a big fireplace and it's like, ah, what a smell. I wish I had a wood burning stove or a fireplace. What an aroma that is. And, uh, and that with the crisp coal there, and it's just got that great rustic uh, um, feeling to it. Ugh. Anyway, I'm sorry for not doing a proper introduction. Thank you for joining us this week. Uh, this is Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest-hitting internet talk radio station on the planet, and I am here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and I would like to introduce my uh, illustrious uh, co-host and mentor, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. How are you feeling? Good. How are you feeling this week, sir? Okay, okay, okay. As long as the uh, put your hands I know. stays away. Yeah. Uh, I would like to um, say hello to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Hello, Miho. Send her my love. And um, I would like to say hello to my good friend in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, former WWE pro wrestling star and uh, personal trainer extraordinaire, Mr. Ken Thiessen. Ken Thiessen, greetings. Um, I would like to say hello to uh, uh, Rick Brown and uh, Eric. Doyle of Southern California of the organization now called um, Unconventional Asylum. Um, let's see. Of course, my two fine administrators on my face, two very important, well, one really important Facebook group which is the group named after the show, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth, Administrator, uh, uh, Sosh, uh, Boyle, and Jolton Joe Stebbins of the group uh, titled, um, This Group is About Nothing. That's the name of the group. Uh -huh. Greetings to the both of them. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, that, that should do it. So, <clears throat> that's it. The formalities are over. Uh, let us now sink our teeth into these readings. We're doing this early this for the show. Um, as the show goes along, I will come out with different 
bits of information, tidbits that I have heard over the past week as they come to me. Because I was so busy, I didn't write them down. That's why we're sinking our teeth into the readings early. <laughs> so, um, that's it. Take it away, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen. In the natural course of things, Democrats frequently disagree with Republican convictions, but they do not accuse. They're pussies, that's why. The Republicans, on the other hand, frequently find the Democrats to be morally wrong. Oh, and Republicans are, are, are morally right? That's correct. They have the moral high ground. High ground. High ground on what? On, on being a crook? On everything. On taking bribes? Everything. Corruption? Uh, 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 taking food out of poor children's mouths? Taking food and health care away from veterans? Yes, and, and, that and, they're really good at. They did and, it the and other having, day. And having our veterans that came back from Afghanistan and Iraq be homeless? <coughs> they did it the other day. Oh, but they Tom have... Coburn, Senator Tom Coburn. They, they always say no to helping the poor and food stamps and all that stuff. To and, spending money and they're on all, people. And they're also racist and bigots. Ooh. And these are the people at a moral high ground? Yes. yes. What a joke. Ask them, they'll tell you. Of course they'll tell you. Democrats are baby killers. Uh, um, uh, a car dealer, uh, the, the guy from the Twilight Zone episode, Harry Honeycutt, yeah. he'll tell you that this, this car is, this used car is fantastic. It's full of character. That means it's a piece of junk. Yeah. It's full of character. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. What nerve they have. Anyway, the Democrats to be morally wrong in their beliefs. Prove it. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good, Thessalonians. Prove that they're wrong. Prove that you're right. They never can. The January 14 letter, for example, says that President Obama violates the Constitution. Yeah, and which, which one was that? By which the writer really means Obama has done some things he does not like. Oh, oh, well, how many things the Republicans have done that are very wrong? Republicans also frequently shift the blame for troubles from themselves to their political opponents. Thus, it is not they who have obstructed Congress, but the Democrats. And the Democrats are too wimpy to strike back and hit them below the belt just like they do. Democrats have no spine, they don't retaliate, and that's the way you handle a bully. A charge that is ludicrous when one examines the evidence and finds that Republicans have voted against almost anything the President has proposed. That magical word that I love, evidence. The writer also uses loaded words in his disagreements. Obama has not merely done some questionable things about capitalism, but has shown a disdain for it. So do I. Capitalism is the devil's economics. It's the proven devil's economics. The writer has a right to object to the government's easing of relations with Cuba. But he again reveals his use of excess when he says that the president is in bed politically with Fidel Castro. Well, being in bed with um, is, well, it depends. Being in bed with a totalitarian military dictator is very wrong. Being in bed with socialism is actually not wrong at all. It's actually very positive. But the United States is in bed with Red China. Because they do a lot of business. There you go. Cheap labor. Ain't that the way it is, eh? Cheap labor, man. And and you know, why should the poor Cuban people have to suffer? You you think the embargo hurt the Castro family? No. It hurt the poor but people. It did hurt those people. 
who have to make the parts and and uh, fix the old classic cars in Cuba because they can't purchase new ones it's very, or make their own. It's very common in Latin America. When I was in um, vacation in um, um, Venezuela, it was Venezuela, I think, they said to me, uh, the people said, um, this was a long time ago, way before Chavez, uh -huh. uh, Hugo Chavez, um, it was Margarita Island, uh, Caracas, and then we went to Margarita Island. But anyway, they said, Latin Americans, I mean, Latin Americans in Latin American countries are the best mechanics because they have to keep their old vehicle going yeah. continuously for many years, as, 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 as much use as they can get out of it, because yeah. they can't afford to buy a new, a new car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they but, end they, up but it was the sanctions on Cuba that prevented them from being able right. to, you know, I mean, buy the parts outside their country, et cetera, et cetera. So et cetera. necessity... Yeah. Mother of invention. Yeah. Necessity forced them to be outstanding mechanics. Mm -hmm. And a mechanic, I mean, we're talking about mechanics that don't have an electronic diagnostic machine that hooks up to the computer in your car. Dunzo! We're talking about lifting the hood and looking and listening and making the diagnosis based yeah. on your skill yeah. as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. okay. Those days are gone. And these old cars, they don't have fuel injection. These are carburetors, right? That's correct. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, so. You're driving around with 1953 Chevys and Fords and stuff and, 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 as taxi cabs. And all of that. Oh, crap by the way, that. the auto body the work must be very good in Cuba because yeah. those old cars look primo. They make their own, they make the parts for them. They make the parts that they can't get. They make them. Oh. They make. Wow! Them. Really? Yes. I'm impressed. Of course. Yeah, why, you know, it's ridiculous, this embargo. 54 years of an embargo, and Mr. Uh, Senator Marco Rubio would like the sanctions to continue. Boy, did they work in the 54 years, didn't they? What a nut. This is an example of Republicans. They do not like change. No change at all. Good, bad, ugly. They don't like it. Well, I noticed that, um, I noticed one thing, Pe people of, of ethnic origin, f originally from third world countries, once they um, become financially independent or, or financially very well off, they often tend to go from being a, uh, a progressive a liberal mm -hmm. to a conservative, conservative. Yeah. and they, they switch parties most people who, who they sell out is what I'm trying to say yes, yes, yes. most people who do make money become conservative and this includes the African Americans who turn who get big bucks and be, and become Uncle Tom's yeah. and sell out they sell out their own people and they switch parties and become Republicans like Herman Cain Tom and soul and others yes many others we have there are current uh, black Republicans that have sold out the, the cause you yeah. know their own people mm -hmm. the simple truth about reason is that it always ceases to function when emotion arises right it is no surprise to find that the writer also dislikes Pope Francis. Of course the Republicans don't like Pope Francis because he's very compassionate and, and, and empathic. And pointing up... Empathetic? Empathetic. What's the word? Empathetic. Empathetic yes. towards the poor. Yes, and, and well, that's exactly <sighs> it. Pointing up the flaws in capitalism. You know, heaven forbid. God forbid, because capitalism to the Republican is aligned with mom, apple pie, and the flag. What if you like? It's blue a religion. What if you like blueberry pie? 
Or, shoe, like or shoe fly pie. No, I don't like shoe fly. Or pecan. Well, shoe fly pie is too sweet. It's yeah. it's, it's molasses, you know. Yeah. Key lime. There's no flies. And pecan. I don't like either. Too sweet. Too sweet. Yeah. I love. I like key lime if it's mild. On the and I like blueberry. All right, we're, we're getting <laughs> off. I digress. Hey, a digression now and then is okay. Yeah, but I, we're going from this to 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 baking pies. All right, you started it. He may well <laughs> be right about a schism within the Catholic Church. <laughs> the bitter truth, I suggest, is that a schism is, like many unhappy things, an unfortunate necessity. Yeah, jism is a is a positive necessity. There's a guy. There's a digression. <laughs> yeah, but I had to say it because it rhymed with with schism. Right, the Pope. <laughs> sees that in the last few decades his church has weakened and he seeks to save it by bringing it closer to our contemporary world. However, the Bible says, be not of the world. That's true. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I think I should bring back the uh, old-fashioned jingle bells for our jokes. Oh my God! Yeah, maybe I will. Oh my God! Blast from the past. Once again, Governor Christie of New Jersey has insulted every public employee in the state. Of course. In his State of the State address, he called state pensions an entitlement. What? An entitlement is something that is given to you, such as a welfare payment or a grant. As a retired police officer, I earned my pension over 30 years. That, yes. Yeah, and Social Security is not an entitlement either, right-wing jerks. By serving my community and by paying a large percentage of my salary into it over time. That's right. In my opinion, an entitlement would be the governor spending millions of our taxpayer dollars defending himself from such investigations as the one involving the George Washington Bridge. Bridge gate, yeah. One must admire Governor Christie for his sheer nerve. Yes, yeah, that's, that's about it. <clears throat> if for little else, as he continues making his quixotic drive for the presidency his first priority. In his State of the State address, the governor essentially addressed national issues while failing to address problems closer to home. They include a poor jobs market, firms leaving New Jersey, the downgrading of state bonds, and, of course, the continued delays in getting Superstorm Sandy relief money to all those Superstorm Sandy, needed. not Sandy. 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 Yeah. But the money, it's over two years. It's right. over two years since when, Sandy. When are these poor folks going to be compensated like his rich friends are compensated when they get when they get uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here when they get uh, 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 when they stop trying to get the money you know like the Social Security does when you apply they turn you down turn you down yeah. by by default they by deny default, yeah. they deny everyone yes first they're, time around they're playing a numbers game yeah, yeah. which is not very ethical dr bill well what the hell coming from our government is ethical these days very little yeah that's for sure i mean i mean i mean when uh when when um when a, if a democrat uh is serious about overturning uh, citizens united that's ethical that's positive Mm -hmm. But not <laughs> what Republicans want. Yes. Want no, 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 no. And of course, some Democrats also, because they 
They are involved also. Mr. Clinton, Cor Mr. World Man, running around, great big Bill Clinton. The one that, that, Glass that squeezes out a tear and says, I feel your pain. Bunch of baloney. Sell out. Crocodile tears. And by the way, speaking of crocodile tears, the one who got threatened recently, Speaker, uh, the weeper. Boehner. Uh, John Boehner. Yeah. Those are crocodile tears. But when he's when he's happy, you ever see the arrogant smug on his face? The smug look? Uh, I mean, smirk. A smug yeah, smirk. Yeah, snarky, snarky. Snarky smirk. Yeah, there you go. Governor Christie has recently appeared more interested in hog farmers in Iowa. Oh, I figure that, that, that that's right up his alley, a hog farming. <laughs> but yeah, wish I had the bells. <laughs> Vetoing a bipartisan bill for the humane treatment of pigs. He's got a soft spot in his heart for pigs. Chipotle. Yes, Chipotle. They they stopped doing business with a raiser of pigs because they weren't raising the pigs in a free range manner. It was in in, in the in the crates in humane yeah. ma manner, right? So they stopped buying their meat. So now there's a little shortage of pork. At Chipotle. Well, if a, if a, listen, livestock are only livestock because us wonderful, uh, uh, loving humans have decided to eat them. But they're still animals, and they're still entitled. They're still living creatures. They're still entitled to humane treatment. And uh, healthy conditions of living, which includes some exercise and fresh air, you know, and, and good healthy food. Because and, and and a humane way of dispatching them. Yes. Yes. That's that's yes, yes. that's all I got to say about that. Yes. They um. These when you mistreat the animal before slaughter. This stuff winds up in, in the body, yeah. in the meat. That includes drugs, antibiotics, oh, hormones, all that other crap. Hormones, yes, yes, right. yes. Of course. Which is in the friggin' milk, by the way. And guess who makes recumbent bovine growth hormone? Uh, Starts with an M. The most evil corporation on the face of the earth. A big capital M. Monsanto! You see that post about the history of Monsanto? Did you see that they changed the name of Aspartame? Oh, because it hasn't been selling, right? Well, because of all the bad press about it. It's still bad. Yeah. They just changed the name. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Clear Skies Amendment. <laughs> Make it sound good, right? <laughs> and football fans in Texas than the people of New Jersey. Well, I think Chris Christie uh, goes to Dallas Cowboy games and gets them for free, of course, is because he probably loves them them dar barbecue joints down there in Texas. No, he likes the owner. The owner gives them things. That's correct. And, and, yeah. and, and whispers uh, sweet nothings in his ear. That's correct. Tells him nice things. I just want to tell you, you chubby bastard, that you're, we loves you down here in Texas. Us right wingers just love Chris Christie. Crisco, Krispy Kreme Christie. On the surface, Christie tries to appear as an articulate leader. Oh, he tried to really get fancy during that State of the State address.
But when one looks behind the facade, one sees an ambitious bully. Ambitious? Who cares only about himself. That's putting it very mildly. And little for the people he is supposed to serve. Little or nothing. His act is wearing thin. But he got re-elected. And the recent picture of him trying desperately to hug the Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones only adds to the caricature he has become. I still say my favorite character on the group of him wearing a parking cone. Looks like a dunce yeah, cap. Uh, referring to Bridgegate. Nice. Just being spiteful with the uh, uh, mayor of uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey, who happens to be friends with Mario Petrus. And uh, Mario told me, yeah, Chris Christie wanted to get even with him. And, and he he says, I have a right not to support Chris Christie. He's a Democrat. Chris Christie is old-time politics when they get even. He expects get even. a Democratic mayor to endorse him. Yes. What, what colossal nerve. He wanted, a, he, wanted, he wanted everybody to endorse him. A or mandate. Else. He wanted the mandate. You gotta love me. You gotta speak nice of me, and and and, and you gotta support me, even though you disagree, uh, or uh, or else. He's a he's a he's a bully. He's a dictator. That's what he wanted. He wanted a mandate so that he can dictate his his uh, ideas. To hell with the New Jersey legislature. Yeah, and to hell with his diet because it looks like he gained it all back. I think he wants to be obese so he can he can be a steamroller. He wants to continue eating the shit he eats. He wants to be able to roll over everybody, you know, like a steamroller. I mean, Sit on their head. Oh God, please. No, but I mean, I mean. City with Christie? Oh shit. Even a Brazilian wouldn't do that. No, he's um I mean uh David Letterman was right, you know, uh, when they were missing manhole covers in New York City, he says Chris Christie has one as a waffle wire. <laughs> Which I thought was very clever, Joe. Very As manatees recover in Florida. They're cute. I like manatees. I like manna coffees too, but their United States home base more and more seem to be showing up farther west along the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. A total of seven stranded manatees had been reported along the Alabama coast. Well, in Florida, they're kind of abused. I mean, they have like propeller marks on their back from boats that, 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 that just ride over them. I mean, we're talking about people in Florida. Airboats. Airboats and, you know, they just... They don't have a, a, a good life. Florida, so they're moving. I, I, I don't blame them. If they want to go to a quiet area. When a network to report standings and sightings was created. Since then, since 2007, we've responded to dozens of standings. Around 
the island sea, uh, 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 excuse me, said Ruth Carmichael, head of the dolphin, dolphin, not dolphin, dolphin, what? dolphin, island sea labs, manatee sighting network for Alabama and Mississippi. I think they're wonderful animals. They're, they're very inoffensive. Carnivorous in any way? Watercress is extremely high in nutrition. Oh, I don't know. Gary loves watercress. Watercress is one of the tops. Watercress, Swiss chard, kale. I mean, uh, um, um, dandelion greens, al alfalfa. I mean, yeah, well, uh, uh, was that uh, dandelion green parsley? You know, but as far as watercress, kale, and Swiss chard goes, it's on top. I think things are changing in the manatee population and in the environment. I think, Chris. She said, scientists know there are more of the big, gentle, marine mammals than there used to be. There are more of them? Good, they're making a comeback. I like that. But habitat is stable or declining. Something that a natural thing would be to spread out. It seems like they like, if, if they're near the, if they're in the salt water or brackish water, and they are, they like to stay around the mangrove swamps, because mangroves grow in salt water, mm -hmm. the plant, the tree, whatever you want. You know, a lot of roots go into the water, and it's a haven for many uh, young fish, you know. Yeah, they can hide in there. Or, or adult fish. From a predator. Right. It, 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 it provides refuge and, um, you know, and that's where the vegetation is the most heavy, where the manatees graze. Because they're called sea cows also. In hope of gathering enough data to learn whether her impression is accurate, she's now working with people in Louisiana and Texas to expand the network. As far as I know, the only manatee sighting network in the country to those states. more animals coming here, staying longer, going farther west. We want to be prepared, Mark Michael said. Louisiana has averaged seven manatee sightings a year in the past 20 years. Up from about one a year over the previous two decades. Work toward a four-state sighting network is preliminary so far, but the project is important. They are, <coughs> excuse me, an endangered species. Yeah, that's what I meant. So we need to work together to protect and conserve They're also called sea cows. Sea cows. Uh, I also am very uh, uh, have strong feelings for the protection of sea turtles too, because they're endangered. They are. 
are vegetarian. The man is seems Averaging about 10 feet long and about one ton in weight. And they're big. Their greatest threats in the United States are big. Habitat, habitat loss and boat propellers. Yep. Which injures so many that biologists identify hundreds from their scars. Yeah, they have at least scars. The population was estimated in the hundreds in 1967, but is now at least 4,800. Oh. Oh, they make quite a comeback. The number counted in January 2014 by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. The Commission won't give total population estimates. Well, I think the manatee is uh, making a wise decision, if that's what they do, to uh, migrate to other Gulf uh, coastal areas where there, there are mangrove swamps. You know, vegetation, coastal vegetation. Alabama is one of them. Uh, Mississippi is on the Gulf of Mexico. Um, Miss, uh, uh, yeah, Louisiana, of course. Um, <coughs> I don't know about the coastal area of Texas. I don't know. It's not. I don't think Do that's. They produce I don't think tropical. I mean, to have mangroves, you sort of have to have a subtropical environment. Well, I think Texas would be dry. Galveston, Corpus Christi. What is it? What is 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 uh, west to east latitude or is that longitude? Latitude is uh is east to west. Is uh, horizontal. Yeah. Well, they're in the same latitude. Texas and Florida. I mean, all the programs I've seen on TV always showed uh, like a kind of an arid uh, environment uh, on the Gulf where Texas is. The Gulf possible, side. Possible. You know, I mean, mangroves... I don't know. I really don't, don't know. know. Okay. So I'm only, we don't know. We don't. Know. I'm only going by uh, uh, the lushness of the land. You know, vegetation versus lack of vegetation. Yes. All we know is that the manatee is doing good. His home well. base yeah. is Florida. Period. Uh, it's doing well. It's doing better than it, than it was in the past. That's the only thing. You know, that, I mean, uh, at one time, alligators were in danger, but they're sure not in danger now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> alligators. I am a 70-year-old. We're changing pace here. Now. Yeah, well, not you per se, but, you know. Well, I am right now myself. You know? You're, 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 you're full of vim and vigor. Next month will be 71. And he goes, but I feel 18. And he goes and spills the beans instead of keeping the mystery of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen. Oh, no, 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 no. The no. mystery. I, I must. The Dorian Gray that goes on forever. No, he's got to. I must portray wisdom. He's got to give his age. And, and wisdom comes with age. On the internet. No. Oh, I don't go around spouting my age. 
Well, you don't have to. You're not of the wisdom age yet. No, I was. I was. Uh, I was born a, a wise wizard as soon as I came out of the womb. <laughs> oh my God! I am a seventy-year-old dating a seventy-one-year-old widower. Oh, that's not good. Got to find a young one. He divorced his first wife for infidelity. Was she old when she cheated on him? And the second marriage. I don't want. I don't want to think. That mental picture is not pleasant. <laughs> and the second marriage was not terribly happy either. Though he says at least she was faithful. I have been divorced for more than 20 years after an abusive marriage of 20 plus years. Ugh. I was hospitalized twice in mental facilities for depression. This is... I will always have to take medication. This is the 70 year old, 71 year old? 70 year old woman. Oh. I, I disagree, take, of course, with that statement. I gotta be taking my medication. Yes, forever. Oh, my, my doctor told me I, I can't stop taking That's this correct. medication. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, but if you tell them uh, about nutritional supplementation, they'll say, uh, uh, I'm taking too many pills. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, You want yeah, me yeah, to yeah. take more pills? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. pills when you're pills. taking vitamins. That's right, yes. But, but it's not pills when you're taking all those drugs, right? No, no, no. My doctor told me I have to take them. Because he, they call it medication. Yeah. Medication. And uh. I suffer post-traumatic stress. Yeah, I'm getting stressed out just hearing all this. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, my boyfriend can't tolerate hearing anything about my past. They call them boyfriends when they're that age? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> if he so much as sees a photo of when I was young, he is racked with jealousy. Ah, what? I know you got a you got a man on the side. Who is this guy? Who is aha? I'll catch you red-handed. Before his first marriage, he had a happy life with his parents and his sister. However, I suspect he has always felt that he didn't measure up to other men. Boing. Boing, you didn't measure up. Boing. He seems overly concerned with his appearance. You know, old people shouldn't be having these type of, of issues. You know what I mean? They should be playing bingo and shuffleboard and golf. And bocce ball. Bocce ball and uh, horseshoes or whatever that, that doesn't hit them in the head. Go on cruises. You know, uh, dance to whatever they dance, the Foxtrot and the Peabody and the... Hey, that's where they get in a lot of trouble when they go on those cruises. <laughs> <laughs> then they meet boyfriends yeah. and yeah. girlfriends. Excuse me, are you dating anybody? <laughs> I don't think that even matters <laughs> at, at that time. It's, 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 it's a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, one day things. Remember that? Uh, remember that uh, liquor commercial uh, for sherry called Dry Sack. Yes. Dry Sack on the rocks. Well, dry that's exactly the best description of these old geezers. <laughs> dry, dry Sack. sack. <laughs> and oh God, he is very concerned that he be taller than me. 
oh, you know, maybe he's got a, maybe, maybe it's a Napoleonic complex. A lot of short a people have that. complex, yes. The, well, yes, same thing. Napoleonic inferiority. You know, uh, a diminutive people. I uh, like the little dogs. You know, they tend to be uh, more obnoxious and louder and more feisty. I don't dare wear shoes with heels when I am with him. Oh, I would love to see her wear very high heeled shoes just to piss him off. While he is constantly talking about his past, his travels, his former wives, really? if I say anything at all about my past, he agonizes with jealousy. Ah, uh, you know what she, she, she should do? She should wear these, these uh, lifts, you know, several inches above his head, and she, she should say in public, I'm here with my uh, boyfriend. He's over there, the little man. The little munchkin. <laughs> I am not talking about relating dating stories or intimate details. He sulks when he is in a bad mood. <laughs> oh, she, she had boyfriends. <laughs> She's taller than me. <laughs> Is that how, how a sulker, a seven-year-old sulker acts? I have tried arguing with him, ignoring him, and reasoning with him. He says he is trying to not be that way and prays about it. He prays about it? Oh, he must be a Republican. He feels he can pray about it. Everything. But the problem persists. I guess God is not hearing his prayers. Because maybe I guess he's cut off. From because God. maybe like the vast majority of human kind. That's true. But maybe his uh, his problems, his issues are not important for God to intervene anyway. You know, he's crying about silly things. Maybe it's you know, I, like, I, me, me. I, 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 think the, I think God's priorities is not, yeah, you know, who, who your girlfriend... God's priority is what can you do for me? Who? Uh, well, then now you're making God sound like a corporate CEO. No, he sounds like in charge, the boss. No, what I mean is, it's, it, is. it's not important, you know, trivial things like that are not, not of importance for God to intervene. It's like it's like when these uh, evangelical born again kooks, holy rollers, feel that they could talk to God every day well, and say, "Oh, my refrigerator! Oh, uh, I'm going to pray for a, for a new refrigerator." This is like uh, can no, it's usually a new car. Can creates cousin. She actually. She actually left her car that was stuck ah. in the parking lot of a local strip mall saying that I'm going to pray about it and the Lord's going to get my car out of that parking lot. Nice. Uh, so she can, she can boss the, uh, the Lord around, but the Lord can't boss her around? You know what I would say? Is that what you just said in, before? Yeah, in a godly voice, if if I was uh, that that the man upstairs, I would say, "You're bothering me for this. Do you have triple A? <laughs> yes or no? But well, if you don't have triple A, you better get triple A. 
However, because you're bothering the Lord to get your car out of a parking lot? Are you out of your mind? Well, actually, you were assuming that her prayer went to the Lord. Well, they think they can just oh, talk yes. to him 24-7. Yes, that's what I'm saying. All those but he says no. All those right-wing evangelicals think that. But God says no. He has cut himself off from humanity, except for the elect. Elect. Thank you. I am wondering if this relationship even has a chance at this point. I spent many years recovering from the abuse of marriage and don't want to jeopardize my health and sanity. Answer. Maybe he doesn't fit a narrow definition of abusive, but he is plainly more invested in controlling you than appreciating you. Where would you say your health and sanity fall on your boyfriend's priority list? Above or below his ego? Listen. If his, if him being short was such a big problem to her, she wouldn't be with him. As far as her past no, goes. No, it's a problem for him, not her. As far as her past goes, everybody has a past. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you think? Everyone has a crystal ball and says, well, all virgins. 20 years from now, I'm going to be dating this wonderful woman. And you know what? I'm going to keep myself uh, uh, celibate ah. for 20 years and not date anybody because I'm going to meet her in 20 years from now. And I expect this 70-year-old woman that I'm waiting for to be a bird. Thank you. He's a very unreasonably selfish he is totally, he is ridiculous. <laughs> it's sad. It's especially sad for him. Since his preoccupation with appearances and with your doing exactly as he expects in order to maintain them dictates priorities that make it impossible for him to love or to be loved fully. Yeah, we, we, we dabble in psychology on the show, too. Science, you know, the environment, so, so on and so forth. Health, However, and, health and nutrition. Yeah. Because it's all related. That's why Newsletter Censored involves itself with the five taboos of American life, which are... You know, health, religion, child rearing, sexuality, and politics. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, because life is multifaceted. Life itself is never one topic. Topic, one, one subject. <laughs> However, as long as his primary goal. You Dig that, brother? You dig what I'm, where I'm coming from? Is to avoid looking bad. He will sulk and agonize and work his puppet strings to get the behavior he wants from you. Let him sulk. Let him cry like a baby in a crib. <laughs> That, that cries uh, in the middle of the night, every night, because, not because he's wet, not because he's shit in his diaper, not because he's hungry, but because he's, he, he's 
just, he wants to, what do they want to do? Attention. Attention? He wants to bust your balls. Attention. And as long as you run to the crib <laughs> and pick the baby up just to give him attention, he's always going to do it. And this old geezer is always going to play these mind games with her. Uh... Bingo. And as long as you are tailoring your behavior to please him, you are not giving yourself your health and sanity what you need. And what is the point of an intimate relationship? Not your mutual emotional satisfaction. When that is not your shared goal, what remains is each of you looking out for your individual goal. The man you describe is plainly looking out Someone with a strong track record of independent good health might withstand second-class status and find other ways to get their needs met. Why anyone would want such an arrangement is another matter, but your history, he says, you need way you can help manage another's well-being is if your partner helps take care of you in return. It's supposed to be a mutual partnership. You know? It's teamwork. Teamwork. Right. It's teamwork. You know, I mean, if one, if one star player becomes a Hot shot, and you know, uh, it's all for himself. It doesn't feel that he needs to uh, be part of a team and contribute to the team. And bye bye. Yeah, the, 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 it's going to be detrimental to the team. Did I see something fall? No, no. I thought, I, thought I did. All right, you want to take a lunch break? No, we got one. All right. Five minutes here for a little reading. Okay. Got some heavy duty? Well, it's health related. Really. Health. Health. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that advertisement I see every night is a very upsetting for uh, the human papilloma virus to give young Get girls. Your kids vaccinated Get now. your kids vaccinated now. Uh, does that guard a civil? Yes. That has killed many young girls? Yes! Vioxx killed 60,000 people. Do they care? Do they care? Really? Did they care? So, so that's 60,000 lawsuits, right? Should be. But that doesn't bring back the victims. But of course, those lawsuits are always... Uh, what do you call it? They are, you're not supposed to talk about them once you win them. These drug companies have been sued so many times. And you know what? These idiots out there in America, they really look up to the USDA and the FDA and, you know, thinking that they're there to protect you fight for you. How can they protect us and be there for us if they're a corporate chill? Uh, they're in bed with yeah. Big Pharma, Big hey, Agra, anybody, the food industry, with half his brain working and saw what happened with Eric Cantor, cannot 
be blinding himself to the way it works. Like Mo Howard. And it seems like Americans continue to blind themselves. Or, or to be blind. Or be, be deceived. Revelation 12, 9. Yeah, but you know, people, progressives like us have the ability to all the bullshit, but they can't. That's what amazes me. Maybe they can't, or maybe they don't want to. Because Somebody of, put up a banner the other day. Was it a cult? Somebody put up a banner the other day. Supposing you have been wrong all of your life, in your life choices, and etc., etc., are you going to be willing to admit that and repeat? Listen, I have admitted that I have been lied to growing up by the, the false history books in school, uh, uh, by what relatives have told me, uncles, what have you, aunts. I admitted that I was fed many lies and I recognized what those lies were were. And I have rejected all that, that I have been, all that misinformation. But there are people, there are people who, who like this, this spineless wimp that I know says, oh, I can't say anything about Christmas and Santa Claus and all that. I'm a good Catholic. I'm a good cat, yeah. Catholic. Catholic. I'm a good Catholic. My family will get mad at me. You know, pathetic, spineless wussy. I felt like smacking him right across well, the chest. As the Bible says, and if he claims to be a you know, Catholic... Well, he's not He's not an independent free thinker. A, yes, well, he's not. He doesn't know the real God. But, if he were a real uh, religious person, Because he doesn't want people like that. They don't know about Martin Luther uh, uh, of Germany challenging the, the Roman Catholic Church with the truth or, or Herbert W. Armstrong. They don't know about it. All they know is the Catholic book that they grew up with going to Catholic school, catechism, whatever you want to call it, whatever they were taught, they, they do not an independent, free-thinking, open mind that researches and keeps their eyes and ears open to learn like a sponge and recognize uh, excuse me, that Martin Luther had a, a pretty legitimate reason for challenging the Roman Catholic Church. Well, the point is they don't, they don't understand their tenets of their Understand that it was based on the Babylonian mystery religion with Simon Magus. Magical mystery. It has story. nothing to do with Christianity. The Roman Catholic Church. No. Nothing at all. Pagan. And all the traditional all, pagan. all the traditional religious holidays are based on paganism too. Christmas, Easter. Anyway, the, the health article, please. It's a little late now. Because we digressed. We digressed. I digressed. Yes, you did. All right, you know what? We'll pick it up. I, I promise I will not digress when we come back. Uh, it is time for lunch. Um, and we will be joined now by our wonderful, a long time... Uh, commercial voiceover artist William H. Morrow III, uh, and uh, his words of wisdom and promo, and we will be back for the uh, second half of this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
sorry guy got a little melodramatic before. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, I'm very, very uh, I'm, 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 I guess I'm a little stimulated, uh, well, in a good way. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our, our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The, the newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need. Newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye. No. Um, okay. Was it worth saying? No. It was personal. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Remind me later. Alright, yeah, tell me later. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow, uh, for your words of wisdom uh, and uh, telling the folks about Newsletter censored, founded in 1977. Um, okay, we will return to our readings, and this one is an article on health, and we were just discussing health and nutrition during lunch. Um, we're talking about juicing, and uh, we're talking about people who had pancreatic cancer, uh, celebrities like your uh, Patrick Swayze, Michael Landon. Uh, Patrick Swayze uh, re rejected uh, Gary Knoll's offer, and you see what happened to him. And uh, with Michael Landon, I think he was drinking uh, enormous amounts of uh, carrot juice, which happens to be high in on the glycemic index chart. Sugar is food for cancer cells as well as bacteria and viruses. Okay, yes, you're getting natural beta carotene. If it's organic carrots, that's that's good. But let me tell you something. Cancer cells love sugar. So you're only adding more wood to the fire. Mm -hmm. So it has to be done properly. You should be juicing foods that are known for destroying cancer cells, making them self-destruct, you know, like turmeric root, ginger root, uh, always throw in a, a clove or raw garlic, you know, uh, you should be uh, uh, juicing things like uh, kale, watercress, Swiss chard, get your beta carotene from greens and make sure they're, they're, they're clean. Of pesticides, so but that's where you should be getting the beta carotene from, not from high glycemic index produce like carrots, um, uh, um, yams, and sweet potatoes are very high in nutrition and low in glycemic, so there are excellent choices too. All right, begin with this reading. Poorly controlled diabetes discovered in midlife may speed up the rate of cognitive decline over the following 20 years. The investigators whose findings were published this month in the Annals 
of internal medicine. Is that the annals? That's the, yeah, the annals. Anal? <laughs> Analyze oh, data. Sounds like you're talking about the Republican Party. <laughs> Involving 15,792 oh. middle-aged adults who had been followed since 1987. The team compared the rate of cognitive decline among study participants with the rate of age-related cognitive decline among the general population. You know what I saw the other day? What's that? They showed in, uh, I think it was Parade Magazine, I'm not sure. They showed pictures of some of the celebrities who came down with Alzheimer's. And guess who was among them? It was uh, Columbo. Peter Falk. Peter Falk. Yeah. I was not aware of that. Yeah. Well, he, they definitely would require a, uh, a natural chelation of the uh, toxic metals from their body because there's a correlation between aluminum Alzheimer's disease um, and there are some foods that are very helpful for combating Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, wow, so a little late for Mr. Falk no he's right taking now. a dirt sleep yeah but um, uh, uh, cilantro uh, freshly juiced cilantro is outstanding for chelating uh, metals from the blood. Mm -hmm. That's just one sample. Study participants with poorly controlled diabetes experienced cognitive decline five years sooner than healthy individuals of the same age. Yeah. Incidentally, uh, my my show, Holistic Health Talk is on the air right now every Saturday is on the air and just go to the uh, Mega Life 21 progressive uh, internet talk radio station which is at the top of newslettercensor.com you'll see the link right up there and we have a new look uh, at, for the station and um, it's, it's a very uh, cozy dark uh, uh, Sort of a gothic look with a nice roaring fireplace, very relaxing, and uh, you can listen to Holistic Health Talk. Tomorrow on Sunday, of course, you will hear what the Bible really says, the God Project, with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman mm. on the radio station every Sunday, which is tomorrow. Learn what the Bible really has to say. All right, continue. A new study suggests longer surgery times may increase a patient's risk of dangerous blood clots. Really? Blood clots are linked with more than 500,000 hospitalizations and a hundred thousand deaths each year. There's, there's many thousands of uh, cases of uh, uh, hospital-induced infections where people die from that. You know, How just, about the, the, the malnutrition. Just because you're in a hospital doesn't mean you're you're better off there than you are at home. You know, and as far as cost goes. You could be staying at the damn Waldorf Astoria for less than you're paying for your hospital room. Because they know the insurance companies and or Medicare is going to pay for it. As long as they know someone is going to pay for it, they throw the numbers out there and they bill them astronomic fees. It's like, uh... It's like called it, inflation. It's, I guess it's like a professional 
athletes with their with their greedy blood sucking agents. Uh, you know, oh, the athlete gets the money because the owners pay it. They pay it. Well, yeah, and that's called inflation. Well, you know, uh, uh, the capitalists, the corporatists, whatever they like to use words like that. Oh, it's just inflation. It's the cost of living. No, it's they don't call that inflation. What do they call it? They call inflation when you give to the poor. When you help the poor, they like call right it now, inflation or they call it handouts and entitlements. The Federal Reserve, right yeah. now, has given out trillions of dollars to the banks, to uh, thousands of businesses in the United States and throughout the world. I mean, big business. Big business. Corporate welfare. And they don't call this inflation. But if you give... They call it a subsidy. They don't even call it that. No? No. They don't call it that at all because they didn't want you to know about it. So it's not a Bernie problem. Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders, forced them to put out the report. And that's how we know about it. Otherwise, they don't want you to know this stuff. But this is for the elites. But why are you why are you bothering yourself with this information? But the conservatives are fine and dandy about these handouts. To the very rich yes. corporations, yes. but a few crumbs going to the poor in terms of the food stamps and welfare, whatever, oh. and, and, this and makes them lazy. And, and, and Medicaid, and, and, and that, that's they have a, a, a hissy fit over that, and uh, they even have a hissy fit over Social Security, which is not even an entitlement. They have a hissy fit over anything given to the needy. They just don't want the needy to survive. They ha have this deep-seated resentment for the poor. Sometimes they want them to pray to a God who ain't listening. Boy, what results they'll get there, huh? They sure love, they sure love the idea of the needy uh, being homeless and ending up in some privatized prison working for free. You see what they're doing in Utah? They're giving homes to the homeless. Those small homes? They're cute. <laughs> they're like little, little bungalows, little cottages, and they have little, they have a little front porch. They're like, you know what, they're, it, it's like a, a mobile, a new mobile home in yeah, a trailer like camp. Like a mobile home park or with something. A, with a little deck, with a little porch. Yeah, a little, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, they're grassy not. Grassy area surrounded with, you know. It's not a like. Curb or it's not a chicken coop. It's it's a cute little cottage. I think they're they're nice, you know, and it's in Utah, and, you know, you, you got mountain ranges in the background and clean air, and. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean. I could, I could humbly live in one of those. I, I don't know until how big. Your, until your ship comes in. You know. I could, you know, if they're really, I mean, if I'm not, like, if I, I, I mean, I only saw the photo. And I, visually, they're cute. But I don't know if I'm going to have to bend down. No, no. You know, no, walk no, into no. the front door. No, 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 no. I've seen the inside. They have, they have standard windows? Yeah. Then, uh, then uh, I can, I can, can do, do right. You can do what you want to do. In a mobile home, you can do what you want to do. I don't know how many f cubic feet there is in those things. Yeah. But They're rectangular. Let's say some of your older uh, mobile homes, you're only talking about 300, 350 square feet. And you can you can live in those. But these are like these are prefabs. Yeah, whatever they are. They're, they're in Florida. They have these. Uh, it's better than being out on the 
sidewalk in the winter time. Oh, it's a it's a million times better than there being out in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cardboard box there you go. if you're lucky. That's the point. That's the point. Researchers analyze data from more than 1.4 million people who had surgery under general anesthesia at 315 U.S. hospitals between 2005 and 2011. Of those patients, 0.96% developed a blood clot after surgery. 0.71% developed a deep vein thrombosis. A blood clot in the veins deep in a limb, usually the legs. And 0.33% developed a pulmonary embolism. A blood clot that travels to the lungs. Patients who had the longest operations were 1.27% times more likely to develop a blood clot than those who had average length surgery. The risk was lowest among patients who had the shortest surgeries. Thank you. Okay. Well, what you're trying to say is, uh, uh, is um, the American health care uh, system may kill you. Oh, well, we've known that for a long time. does kill you. does kill you. It's not a health care system. It's a disease care system. Right. You know? Of course, the biggest news is the beloved Republican Chris Christie, the hypocrite Chris Christie, calls state pensions and entitlement. Yes. That was the main blockbuster reading of the show for this weekend. But that reflects the Republican Party. Correct. The only difference is Chris Christie is more boisterous and obnoxiously louder than other Republicans, but his feelings are very much echoing the entire party. So. All right. We're doing pretty good. We're banging out a lot of readings. You may think that the government takes a lot of money from the wealthy. Ah, that's what the tea baggers think. And gives it to poor people. Yes, yeah, sure. You might also assume that rich pay a lot to support government, That's while the poor pay a pittance. There is nothing wrong with you if you believe this. What? Our public discourse is dominated by these ideas. Nothing wrong with you. Either it's true or it's not. That's for the person who wants to find out. He's talking about people who just accept it. Numbskulls. Whatever. And you'd probably feel foolish challenging them. I don't. After Mitt Romney's comments on the 47% blew up on him, conservatives have largely given up talking publicly about their makers versus the takers. But much of the right's rhetoric, many of its policies, are still based on these notions. It is thus a public service that the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy has issued a report showing that at the state and local levels, government is indeed 
engaged in redistribution. But it's redistribution from the poor and the middle class to the wealthy. I can really dig this reading. I really like this reading. This is right on the money. It's entirely true that better off people pay more in federal income taxes than the less well to do. But this leaves out not only Social Security taxes, but also what's going on elsewhere. The Institute found that in 2015, the poorest fifth of Americans will pay an average 10.9% of their incomes in state and local taxes. And the middle fifth will pay 9.4%. But the top percent will pay state and locals only 5.4% of their income. Raise your volume. Please. When you think about it, such figures should not come as a surprise. Most state and local governments rely on regressive taxes, sales, and excise levies. Poor and middle class people pay more! This is why the flat tax doesn't work. The flat tax that the uh, very rich want because they want to, of course, they want to eliminate the IRS. Doesn't work. It will ensure that the rich will pay no taxes forever. This is what this reading is all about. Siphoning up, siphoning up to the top 1 to 20 percent. Not trickle down economics. The de capitalism is the devil's economics. It's proven to be the devil's economics. It is siphoned up to the top 20% economics. Siphoning upward the redistribution of wealth. The unfair redistribution of wealth. This is the siphon, by the way. Are you okay? I'm siphoning up. Oh, oh you're making siphon sounds. Jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. Siphon up. Siphon up. Poor and middle class people pay more simply because they have to spend the bulk of their incomes just to cover their costs. This gets to something else. We don't discuss much. That's it. Public policies in most other well-to-do countries push much harder against inequality than we do. According to the Luxembourg Income Study, the United States ranks 10th in income inequality before taxes and government transfers. By this measure, Ireland and Britain, even Sweden and Norway are more unequal than we are. But after government transfers are taken into account, the good old United States of America soars to first in inequality. Really? Norway drops to sixth and Sweden to thirteenth. It's not a matter about which we should be proud to shout. We're number one. We're number one. We're number one. Well, if you're if you're a, a, a stupid, obnoxious, redneck, uh, 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 teabagger like Larry the Cable Guy, who's always saying everything in America, America is number one. Americans are number one. Everything we do is number one. Everything we make is number one. America, America, America. He's annoying as hell. Actually, things may be a bit worse <coughs> excuse me, for 
us, even on pre-transfer incomes. Said LIS Director Janet Gornick. Because people in other rich countries tend to draw their pensions earlier. The overall story is that we are not very aggressive. With apologies to Joe the Plumber. Oh, remember him? Yeah. That stooge? Joe the Plumber? In spreading the world around. Our inequality is already high because of the low minimum wage. It's hard. The weakness of unions. That's right. And high levels of private sector compensation at the top. I was reading that banner uh, quote from uh, the boss of Bruce Springsteen the say, Brucey boy, yeah. saying that unions are the only reasons representation of the 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 will of the people the common man the only the only the only uh strong voice we the that the we the people have yeah was the union is the union we wouldn't have got what we got eight hour day no child labor etc 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 we would never have everything everything without Right. Everything positive that an American worker has today, you can give thanks for all of it to a union. Correct. But if it wasn't for the unions, you wouldn't have these things. How come you never hear the right wing uh, complaining about the American Medical Association Union? Oh, if it helps the fat cats, it's fine. Oh, yeah. I remember Ronald Reagan used to bitch and moan all the time about unions. Yeah, he broke Patco, baby. And my uncle, too. Union this, union that. Oh, the, uh, what is it, the air traffic control yeah. strike. Yeah, rah, 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 rah. Big, big, big shot, you know. Uh, I'm gonna that's, why the, uh, that's why the Supreme Court voted for Citizens United. Because uh, the right wing believes that the unions are too powerful. And they wanted to get to be able to put in as much money as the unions do. And and and, and right politics. to work laws, it doesn't sound as positive as the words appear. Clear sky. But the clear sky amendment, right to work does nothing for the American worker. It's all for the employer, for the corporation. It's bullshit. It's crap. I want to salute unions. I want to salute North America's most powerful union, the Teamsters. I want to salute all unions. May they come back stronger than ever. The Teamsters were powerful, but they were not powerful enough to stop NAFTA. So now we have Mexican drivers on our roads bringing in their food probably laden with DDT etc etc and the jobs are gone thank you Bill Clinton mm -hmm. who felt our pain but signed NAFTA anyway mm -hmm. and signed away Glass-Steagall and signed away glass. Of course. Um, of course and well, much I, more. I heard that China is now embracing um, organic farming uh, uh, wholeheartedly because they uh, have been hit with so many complaints about tainted foods and, you know, uh, anything edible from China is like pretty much poison. And uh, uh, they, they, are, they have finally, re finally realized that uh, inorganic and uh, and the uh, the attitudes of Monsanto and all these American food companies were wrong, and they are starting to say no to all of them. And it's about time that they uh, learned that they were lied to 
Well, I wouldn't by put, corporate America. I wouldn't put much stock in uh, China doing good things in the world yeah. because right now they are over polluted. Oh, air. And they are allowed to continue polluting till 2030. Yeah, but I hear when I, they may. I, I hear they're stopping the pollution now. Well, they didn't sign on to the uh, thing uh, a couple of weeks ago or something that would have, uh, you know, the United States and, and them would have started stopping the pollution now. Is there an international... No, they got till 2030. Is there an international organization uh, uh, whose purpose is to stop... Uh, uh, um, Global warming and environmental polluting, and uh, uh, um, uh, you know the increased uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and so on and so forth. Destruction of the rainforest, uh, destruction of the coral reefs. So, you know, uh, overall planet Earth environmental issues. Is there an, an like an international organization? No, I wouldn't say. To stop, uh, they just have these summits, these yeah. uh, these big summits involving other c countries of the world. And of course, the EPA in the United States is worthless, and it be it, it's made more worthless by putting in charge these executives from the companies that you're supposed to regulate. Well, okay, if the United States really yeah. cared about the planet. They would not have originally allowed fracking to, to begin, ever. There would be no fracking that ever started. There have been 12 earthquakes in Connecticut Oklahoma. in the last week. Oklahoma, I believe. Too. I live near Connecticut, not Oklahoma. Right. So, right. what do you think is the cause in Connecticut? Now, now I hear Ted Cruz is in charge of NASA. Ted Cruz is it, who 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 rejects science is in charge. Of That's my point entirely. That's what they do. That's what they do. They're going to set back. The, the, they worship their ignorance. Listen, Bernie Sanders is right. The United States is the laughing stock of the world, and and by the Republican control Congress and Senate rejecting science even more. They will make the United States look pathetic to the rest of the world, and it should look pathetic. Well, because that probably works in to the biblical decline of modern day Israel, descendants of ancient Israel, you mean, the United States of America. You mean the Republicans winning the Elections and re-elections will ensure the rapid progression in the end time prophecy. With end time prophecy, they're part of the decline. Yes, yes. Because it because as what you call it said, I don't recall his name at the moment. Uh, someone said that the United States, the downfall of the United States, will be from within, not from without. Nikita Khrushchev. Is that who said that? Oh yeah. Well, then he was a philosopher. He not only some repute. not only Nikita Khrushchev, but there there were others. But Nikita Khrushchev like was the most famous of the past who who said that. Well, I do know that he said we will bury you. Well, that didn't happen. Yeah. Well, maybe that didn't happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean the the Roman Empire, um, maybe even the Greek. Civilization. I mean, all, all the big empires of the past were didn't they decay from within? Yes, all four of the big ones: the Babylonian, the, the Ottoman, right. the uh, Greeks, and yeah. the Romans. I don't know about Genghis. Yes, they all went. I don't know about Genghis Khan. I don't know how that fell, but, but yeah, by all the great empires. That was not an empire. All the great empires. Then there was a greater empire than all of those. 
the United Kingdom. The British Empire. The British Empire. They, they are, they Which are the, also declined. They are the modern day descendants of uh, 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 Ephraim. That's correct. Ephraim. Uh, the tribe of ancient Joseph's Israel. Joseph's son Ephraim. And all of the fruits, the colonies of the British Empire, which includes the United States, also have the curse. The United States being Manassas. All, according to the Bible, all Manassas. the blessings that were handed down, they were held in abeyance for like 2,520 years as they were unconditional to Abraham from God. He had to give them to him eventually, and he did. Somewhere around 1800. And that's when the UK became an empire. But then he withdrew them. Withdrew the blessings. Withdrew them. And that's what's happening now. And they've lost, according to the Bible. Oh, they lost everything. They lost their, they lost all of their colonies and etc. And they are now prophesied to lose all of their sea gates, Gibraltar, Singapore, all of these places, the, the Straits of Hormuz, all of these places where they protect shipping, etc. Yeah, well, uh, around uh, the world, uh, London, England, is the uh, the seat, the modern day seat of uh, David's throne. And also, isn't it unusual and um, ironic that the uh, the headquarters for the Rothschilds happens to be in London? Because that's what the, the London banking was there before our banking. We were talking about the uh, the history of the wicked banks. Yeah, the UK was you know the UK was uh, a power before the United States. States became a power because it beat the British on its own land. But it didn't beat the British out in the sea or, uh, you know, uh, on, on British land. Only in America. Yeah, well, they just wanted independence. They, they weren't interested in, yeah, in no. conquests of, of other areas. And at that particular time, the, the, the United Kingdom was still the power of the sea. Right. In the ocean. And, well, the Americans are beating the Spanish Armada. The Americans did get help from some of the France. some of the adversaries of England at France. the time. Uh, a big adversary. Uh, the Polish officer uh, Pulaski. Pulaski. We got uh, 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 Lafayette. French Lafayette. And the uh, the Hessian guy. The German Pru guy. Prussia. Some. From Prussia. Yeah. Otto von Dingleberry or something. Baron von Hindenburg. Ra Rauschke. Baron von Hindenburg. <laughs> the Iron Claw Hindenburg. But, on top of that, we are redistributing less than other countries and have lower taxes on the highest incomes, particularly from capital. That is when the lazy rich sit home and allow their money to make money. Yeah. It is called capital gains. It is not called income. And that reminds me of a little. Uh, what's what's the uh, hobby horse that I have? against the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey has a program. Uh, the initials I know, SLMB, I'm not sure exactly what it stands for at the moment. SLMB. And what it does is that it will pay the $113 that's what it is now, of Medicare's Part B 
be that normal people getting Social Security pay? Did, well, are you aware of the fact that, let's say, you receive a Social Security's uh, income of $1,000 a month? Let's just say, uh, hypothetically. Do you realize that $113 is taken out of that to pay for Medicare Part B? So you're only getting $887. Why the fuck should, should somebody living on a fixed income have to pay for their health care? There you go. Even with Obamacare, they take it out? Yes, of course. I, I, I said I am not aware of the fact but the poor, that you can combine Medicare and Obamacare. But the poor that are getting uh, receiving welfare and Medicaid... They, they don't have to pay for their Obamacare. But these are the sneaky cuts that the Republicans get into laws. Understand? You can't let poor people, you can't give them anything! Nothing! And, and I noticed that the, the, the mainstream local Constantly putting the camera and the mic in front of Republicans, talking about what the Republicans say and how the Republicans feel, and which Republicans said this and which Republicans said that. But never do I see FaceTime given to any of the Democrats or people like Elizabeth Warren, Warren and Bernie Sanders. I never see FaceTime given to them. Uh, uh, even Al Franken, uh, I mean, he's got a banner every now and then online, but I don't see FaceTime you had given one last him. night. Huh? You had one last night. Yeah, very rare. We don't hear from uh, him anymore. I mean, he was he was writing books when he was on uh, Air America with his uh, syndicated uh, talk show, but and he wrote a lot of books. But you know, I mean, he's been. In, it's like he's been in seclusion. They don't give FaceTime to the people that should get FaceTime, but they give the FaceTime to the forces of evil. Getting back to my complaint. Yes. When you sign up for this SLMB program, of course they want to know how much you make and all the other crap. Oh, yes. But, there is also a requirement that you tell them if you have whole life insurance. Oh yeah, they want to know that, yeah. No, they want to know what the surrender value is. They want you to liquidate it. If you liquidate it and you get 300, 400, 500, whatever dollars, they count this as income. But, but it's not meant to be income. It's meant to be life insurance to pay for your friggin' funeral. But here again, number is, one. Here again is one of those uh, socks to the elites rather than the poor. Capital gains is not considered income. So it's all hypocrisy. No kidding. With but it's a hypocrisy that hurts. It hurts the little guy because they don't want the little guy to have anything. They have this, it's almost like they have this obsessive hatred for the poor. Well, they do. Because they, they consider, well, the poor, you're just lazy, that's why you ain't getting rich. That's why you ain't pulling yourself up by bootstraps, man. Yeah, you know, sh show me the jobs. Well, show me the opportunities. Had, even if you had the jobs, the point is, again, which I keep harping on, why? How did we ever come to this this way of doing life, depending on a private sector boss for your very survival? Yeah, and, and our survival as a country. Because what if the boss don't want to produce our airplanes and our bombs for our next war? Then what? Yeah. Okay. They 
they don't even national want, security issue. They don't even want uh, students who took out student loans to, to pay low interest. They want, they want them to pay high interest. And you know what they're doing? They're blaming the government. They're not telling you and showing you. It's private banks that the kids are getting the loans from now. Not the government. And they're getting the loans for careers that aren't, not only are they not in demand anymore, there's just not enough jobs to go around. And the interest payments are 6, 7, 8 percent. Compare that to some business taking out a loan today. What's the percentage points? The Fed has the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the interest rate below 1%. Yeah. Then you got right wingers like that. Uh, I don't even know if she's still a member or not. Uh, the girl I call Ginger Snaps over on, the, over on the Facebook group. She it. says to me, "Oh my!" Uh, she mentions a relative of hers that runs an um, um, an employment agency. Yeah, there's there's loads of jobs rolling in every week. What do you mean there's no jobs? You know what? I says honestly. You know, I don't believe that because all the all the job applications, all the job ads out there now, whatever's left, they require not only the diploma, they require five years plus experience. So they want the training and ed education. Sometimes uh, they want. Like they they want like an associate's degree just for a lousy customer service job and five years plus experience and the the, the, the diploma or the, or the degree. And so what does that do for the average uh, Joe six pack who's unemployed? And uh, has their unemployment run out, and they can't find anything. Now, the point is that the system—it's the system. The system is rotten to the core. It's stupid. Just like the it's whole incompetent. Thing. It's corrupt. Yes. Because just take a thought experiment for a moment. What if there were a lot of jobs at this particular employment agency? But they were all in Seattle, Washington. Would we expect everybody in New Jersey that needed a job to pick up and go to Seattle? That's what my uh, uh, conservative Republican uh, uncle said to me. Uh, you know, you may have to just pick up and move to Silicon Valley, California. You may have to follow where the jobs are. Well, what am I, a miner going out yeah, west? Gold rush. For the gold rush? And they don't get it. They don't get it. Well, how do you live when you get out to Silicon Valley? Oh, they don't care about that because they, they just want to blame you. How the you. fuck do I pay the rent if I move they to Silicon Valley? They want to blame you. That's all it's about. If, if I relocate to Silicon Valley. Okay. No, because the blame is always towards the little guy and the poor. Yes. yes. Continuing. Yes. And at the state and local level, levels, our governments are exacerbating inequality. The IPEP study concludes that every single state and local tax system is regressive. Even states that do better than others have much room for improvement. The five states with the most regressive systems are Washington, Florida, Texas, South Dakota, and Illinois. On its face, the property tax would soon, excuse me, would seem progressive because big houses are taxed more, but the study finds that on average, poor homeowners and renters pay more of their incomes in property taxes than do any other income group. And remember, that's another one of my hobby horses. 
in New Jersey before Christy Creamhead Coco, the Bridgegate jerk. The poor and disabled used to get property tax rebates every year. That's right. But Mr. Christie did away with that, and he did away with the homeowners. He used to get like over 2000 or something property tax rebates. Now it's down to 500 and some change. He even closed some food pantries for the homeless. He, he, he likes to cut things that help the people and the poor, but he got re-elected in New Jersey. Someone please wake me up from my nightmare and explain to me my vegetative coma. How does one manage to pull that off if everybody is cursing at him and complaining about him? How does he manage to get reelected by a landslide? The devil. The devil. Is packed with the devil. Somebody who was so impressive, uh, Barbara Bono, so impressive in the debate with him, loses by a landslide to such an ogre. You know why? It has to be Satan. People, yeah, exactly. People don't give a shit about debates and stuff. What do they care they about? Don't. How I don't think they listen. They got shit for brains. You know? People don't. People are in their own little world, their own little clique. Everybody is is um. It's all about me, me, I, 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 I. Yeah, yeah. It's it's about it's a totally self-indulged, self-centered life. The average person in America. And another thing in line with what I was just talking about. Right. Christy, Christo, Crisco, Creamhead allowed the property tax to rise two percent a year oh, instead so of what it was rise. Aside from taking away the the homestead rebate, right? So he thinks that's a cut. Uh, oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, it was a cut, all right, for those receiving the homestead rebates. Continuing. My blood is boiling. Yeah, it's like, yeah. They, the Republicans have these very general push-button answers that solve nothing. Exactly. You know? They don't solve anything. Yeah. Because you know what? When you look at it, because the right wing, their stuff is all based on their cult of Christianity. It's all based on faith. Yeah. It has no reality. So it's it. it's based on faith that they somebody would tell me to pick up and relocate to Silicon Valley, California. Or that because you ain't succeeding, you are lazy. Uh, you know, and it, oh, it's your own fault. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I was told. I was told way back. Oh, it's, a, it's your own fault. I told you to hook up with a big blue chip company. You know, that's, I was playing chess. It's like, it's, it's like, they expect you to make it happen. They expect you to get up, get off your butt, and go and make it all happen. That's how, that's how right-wingers are. I was playing chess on the internet the other yeah. day with a, uh, it, it probably was some kid, not too old, because he called me old. So, plus then I'm not too old. The point was, he was using a computer. Yeah. And of course, then I'm going to beat you. I'm going to do but I'm going to do it. And I told him, I said, but that's not you. It's the computer. You're not playing the game. You see, the young people in America have that entitled, arrogant, obnoxious attitude that, that everything is just got to come their way and they're going to set the world on fire 
Yeah, and, but, and if you're older than them, you're you're ready yeah, for the, the glue factory, is, and they're they're better than you. And yeah, but the point of it is, he's not better. I it's know. the computer. I'm playing the computer, not him. <laughs> See, that's the point. So oh. why would he be taking credit for winning the game? And why would why would that make his day for yeah. winning the game? Yeah. See? Yeah, it's like, who, who the fuck cares? There is also an unanticipated consequence of growing economic disparities. Because states and localities tax the wealthy less, rising income inequality can make it more difficult for state tax systems to pay for needed services over time. The more income that goes to the wealthy, the slower a state's revenue grows. Bingo! Political debates are typically driven by cliches. That's what you were talking about before. That's what pull yourself up by the bootstraps is. They're lazy. Yeah, because they have theirs, whatever, however they got it, inheritance or, or being a crook, they have theirs. Yeah. And, they, and if and you don't have yours, well, they simply don't care. And they push theirs by cliches rather than facts. Cliche is not a fact. No. The, well, the, 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 the cliche of a person being born with a silver spoon in their mouth that happens to be Republican. That's a fact. The fact is, they were born with a lot of help from Daddy. Yeah, as they said about George W. Bush. He was born on third base and thought he hit a hit triple. Hey, tomorrow Kim Kardashian could start a brand new business and uh, and she could go around bragging, see, I'm a successful, beautiful young woman and, uh, and I got quite a head on my shoulders because... And a big ass. I have, and a big ass, big hairy ass, and I'm, I, I have this thriving business. Oh yeah, <clears throat> your mommy put up the, was the venture capital investor. She put up the money. The 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 big matriarch there, the big cheese. But put up the money. Yeah. At the very least, we expect our cliches to be true. At least we need to stop claiming that we have a massively redistributive government. We need to stop pretending that poor people are takers. Hold on. All right. Move and they, on. in fact, kick in a lot to the common pot. We need to replace arguments about big and small government the debates over what governments at all levels yeah. are doing to make our society more just the, 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 or less. Yeah. Well, hey, man, the, 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 the middle class, the lower middle class, and the poor, they contribute a lot uh, in terms of uh, consumption taxes, sales taxes. And, yeah. yeah. All right. That was a very invigorating show. And why don't they come uh, 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 kick in more uh, 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 income tax? Because they don't make enough. They don't make enough. If you don't want to pay higher taxes, don't make as much money. It's that simple. That's all. I they're like they're like a bunch of spoiled rich kids that are just taking tantrum after tantrum after tantrum. I'm talking about the Republicans in Washington. They just whine and moan, bitch and moan and cry. And it's like, I want my way. Uh, 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 I'm not rich enough. I'm the, I mean, they don't, they don't come clean and tell you what their real agenda is. Okay. They use God as a front man. Yeah, and, and they're not part
have um, all the right wing <laughs> evangelical, whatever, pastors and evangelists just saying absolutely insane, ridiculous things. And, and, and then there are people out there that send them money and believe them. You know, I had somebody. We send them money too, you know. By granting them tax exempt status. And they shouldn't have it if they get involved in politics. If they stick, stick their Pinocchio nose into politics, they shouldn't have it. They should pay taxes like everyone else. Some, some idiot the other day was bragging about, oh, that Glenn Beck, I just love that Glenn Beck. Blah, blah, blah. Does he have some kind of what show on Fox? Now? Does he have a show on no, Fox? No, he was fired from Fox. He, why, he wasn't right-wing enough for them? Correct. He's on the internet now. Really? His own channel. So, so the people that run Fox, these people are really to the right. Absolutely. Because if you're not to the right enough, your history. Right. And they like the blonde, white, lily white, blonde bombshells. They like the, uh, they don't like minority women. You don't see a lot, I would say. That. No, I don't. Anyway, listen. Hey, I, uh, you know who's, uh, uh, who is extremely annoying, right wing twits? Um, uh, uh, the judge Janine Pirro and Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace is terrible. She's terrible. She's just a right wing, a southern right wing. And Janine Pirro is Dixie been on Obama's ass lately. She's been on his ass lately. I, I guess they don't have too much compassion. For the poor, do they? No, well, they don't, of course. Women are supposed to be more, more compassionate than men. Same. You know? We don't have to, uh, you know, mention it every single time, but it goes without saying. If you are right wing, you have no compassion for the poor. Now, if you're right wing, you're living the get way of life. Absolutely. If you're right wing, you're living the selfish way of life. The if you're, devil's way. If you're right wing, you're not a biblical Christian. That's correct. You're an unbiblical cultist. Cultist. There you go. Hey. Thank you for joining us. This was a very, like I said before, a very invigorating show. Really? I really appreciate it and I had fun. Invig in, 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 invigorating. Invigorating and also blood pressure rising too. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it always uh, amounts to that. Now I have to meditate. Now we got to meditate. We got to get, get into our Zen zone. My Zen zone. We don't, too bad we don't have a Zen room here at the newsletter censored yeah, center. Nice little waterfall. Yeah, with the waterfall and, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, what do they have? Uh, koi ponds or yes, something? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, uh, they have, um, the Japanese have this type of Zen garden consisting of very nat pretty colored natural rocks that they rake into different patterns. They call it a Zen garden. And then what are you supposed to do? Like just stare at it? Just be. Just be? Be in the moment. Be in the moment. In the, in the moment is what staring at the, the stones yeah, yeah. in different different yeah. patterns cool man real cool yeah. say goodbye to these jabronis bye cool people bye this has been a mega live 21 production